morning and welcome to Oasis of Life Ministries. We're glad you're joining us. We are about to get into the Word and hear a message from God, our Heavenly Father, our Creator. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you today for the opportunity we've already had to come together and praise our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King, Jesus Christ. And we can do so without reservation without any blockades. We can do so freely with the liberty. And Father, this morning your word, I believe, shall come forth in spirit and in truth, with liberty and freedom, and it will free us from any bondage that Satan has tried to put on us. Father, we thank you. Help us to open our ears and our hearts to your word today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them. This is God talking to us. And we are the them. We are the ones who have received Jesus Christ, received his work at the cross, Received, excuse me, the work in hell. We have received his resurrection. And we have received his work in us. Setting us in order. Setting us apart from the world. And setting us in order to God's kingdom. Those are the them. Shout, I'm the them. I'm the them. I'm the them. Now poke your neighbor and tell them, you're the them. You're the them. Right? After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. You know, we've been talking about attending to God's word, Proverbs chapter 4. How is God going to put this in our hearts and write it on our minds when we attend to his word? And of course, Proverbs chapter 4 says, his words, his saying, our health to all our flesh. And life. He gave us life. You know, a lot of the church right now is asking, where's that abundant life that Jesus promised? It's in this book. It's in this book when this book and the words in it get in our heart. Yes. And when we let them, let God write them on our mind. Now we've got something going. Well, Brother Jerry, how do we do that? Well, number one, through preaching. Where it comes to hear. Number two, through our own personal study. And number three, and most importantly, is meditation on the Word. Notice that meditation comes after we've heard the preaching and the studying because the meditation is on what has been preached and studied. Yes. So we spend some time meditating in the Word. This isn't like Eastern meditation where they empty their mind and just sit there as a blank, whatever. <laughs> no, God wants to fill our mind. He doesn't want it empty. He wants it filled with His Word. Amen? Amen. So He does want to write it on the fly. Why does he want to do that? Because his word works. Amen. His word works. Now let's, let's go a little further here. And their sins, the them's sins, and iniquities will I remember no more. Shout praise God. Praise God. Now where remission of there is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We should have a boldness. And we can enter into that holiest place now. Yes. Anytime, all the time. In the Old Covenant, when Moses was told to set up the tabernacle... Only one person could go into that holiest, and that was the high priest that only once a year. But Jesus, when he 
shouted on that cross, it is finished. An angel tore that curtain, and God's presence is now open to all of us anytime. We don't have to send somebody else in there for us. We can go and be in the very presence of God. We're in the presence of God today in this place. Why? Because God is with us. He's in us all the time. Somebody said, oh, I hope God shows up this morning at our service. Well, did you show up? Well, then God's here. Amen. He's here. Now, I understand what you're talking about. Well, is the real presence of God going to show up? Is there going to be an anointing? Is there going to be things go on, miracles occur, and so on? They should be occurring on, going on in our church services. Amen. Any church, anywhere, anytime, any denomination, we believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in God and the Holy Spirit. We ought to be experiencing God every time we come together. Amen. Amen. See, the Bible tells us we are the fullness of Christ. What does that mean? We're full of Christ. We're full of the anointed one with his anointing. And here he tells us next, he says, we have this boldness by a new and living way, <coughs> which Jesus has consecrated or set up or set in order for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God in the third chapter of Hebrews, we are told, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. What are we professing? Now, what are we professing when we're in church? That's easy there. We're professing we're Christians. Amen? We should be professing we're healed. We're healed. Oh, well, Brother Jerry, I'm not healed. Then get into his word because God sent his word to heal our diseases. Amen. Amen. And see, right now, the world needs to see something. They, they're looking for power. Not within themselves, but where is the power? And quite frankly, most of the world today is convinced that the power is in the politicians and the news media. And the news media itself thinks it's got the power. They will do everything to form this next election to their way. I got news for you. There's some of us out here praying that will take this election to God's way. Amen. 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 Well, folks, how about the church? Is God having his way in the church? We've got a new way and a living way to come boldly into that area of the holiest of all. Now, how do we get there? Turn us off. Let us pray. Psalm 23. And we've been talking about this song for a few weeks right now. Just first line. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Make the connection here, folks. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is in what's set on that table. As we read the Word and we study the Word and we hear the Word, the anointing begins to flow. 
it begins to grow as well. We want the anointing, we need the word. Amen. Right? So when we look at this, we've got to ask a question here. And this is the question we want to answer this morning. What's on the table? What is God putting on the table? He's putting all the benefits of the covenant. We just read that we have been, do, do we, let me stop for a moment. Do we understand the privilege and the honor that we have being brought into the covenant that God made with Jesus? What an honor that is. What a privilege it is for us to come into that covenant. If God made with his son Jesus Christ. Why does he do that? Because we're all sons. Hello. We're all sons. And so we are accepted into the covenant. And all of the covenants belong to God. God puts them on that table. And as we spiritually eat from that table, we start to understand the benefits of the covenant. All the benefits of God's covenant are set on that table. And they're shown to us by the church and by the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go to Psalm 103. Let's take a look at what's on that table this morning. David, Psalm 103, writes this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What is David doing? He's starting his spiritual meal with praise. And he's telling his soul, his mind, will, and emotion, you will bless the Lord. You will empower him in your life. When we do, there's an old, there's a song that we used to sing out of this in the church. Bless the Lord with my soul. My thinking right now is sometimes we need to get back to some of those songs we used to sing back in the 70s and so that came from the blood, from the psalms that David wrote. They're all songs. David sang these to God. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't we? Yeah. But look at these benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquity? Who heals all thy diseases? Who redeems thy life? destruction. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Who redeems thy life from destruction. Who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things or words so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. What we want in the church is to know his ways. Yeah. Not just see his acts, but know his ways. Excuse me for just one moment. I like what Charles Tepp said about preachers drinking water so the sermon doesn't get dry. <laughs> Sermons and pre preach messages. I want a message from God. Amen. Amen. Well, we've got one coming this morning. Look at this. These are his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. Folks, if we didn't have another benefit in the covenant for that, that would be fantastic. That's right. Amen. Amen. God forgetting all our are uh, forgiving and forgetting all our benefits, our iniquities. He heals how many of our diseases? All. Oh. How many? All. Oh. How many? All. Oh. So what disease does he heal? None. There's no disease that Satan can come up with that God and the blood of Jesus aren't able to heal. God said in Psalm 107, I sent my word, that's Jesus, and the 
redeems our life from destruction. Well, diseases, sickness, lack, poverty, oppression, depression, whatever it is, God has redeemed our life through the blood of Jesus Christ from all these things. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. That verse in Psalm 91 tells us covenant protection. God has given us covenant protection. Amen. Glory to God. He satisfies our mouth with good words. For what purpose? To renew our strength. To renew our strength.
as born again believers should be. Correct. Mm -hmm. As he is. Let that sink in. Whatever God is, we should be. Okay. Verse 6 If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, let me stop there for a moment. And I've told you this abundantly before, but we can probably bring it up again. Back in Abraham Lincoln's day, he declared a day of prayer, a national day of prayer. It's actually written into our Constitution. So the whole nation is supposed to take that day as a day of prayer with God. Amen. Newark used to celebrate that day down on the square by the courthouse. There's a gazebo, gazebo down there and used to hold meetings down there and set out chairs just all, all day. I mean, I, I go down there and I had each one of us as ministers that would come, we'd go down, we'd have an hour for our prayer time. Well, at the end of the service here a while back, uh, they had some real special folks come down there. Uh, uh, Tim Schaefer, he's one of our state senators. I got to meet him at one of those. It was a super fellow. Man of God. He spoke. We had, so we had a government official speak. We had uh, a couple of ministers speak. Tim spoke first. I had that stand up. They got a second. And then this other pastor got up there. And he stands up there after what I preached. And I talked about the healing and forgiveness of God to this crowd. We had six people in that crowd that day. Good morning, Amen. Amen. Two of them were drug addicts. Just stumbled by. Glory to God. Then this other fellow got up and he was supposed to preach a little bit and he was supposed to close the whole thing. And he gets up behind the pulpit, throws his hands in the air, and shouts, I'm a sinner! And I'm proud of The anointing hit the ground. I went to get up. I was going to go up on the platform and ask him if he would like to get born again and stop being a sinner. Patricia Bell was sitting next to me and she knew where I was. She grabbed my arm and she said, please don't do that. Now, how did she know what I was going to do? <laughs> I still think I should have gone up and done that. What was my point? We're not sinners. Do we commit sin? Yes, but we have an immediate avenue through the blood of Jesus to repent and get refreshed and have restitution even from what we've done.
we have this avenue that we don't have to stand like the children of Israel and tell Moses, you go before God, you find out what he says, you come back and tell us, we can go get it right direct from God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's no middle man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here we are. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, all. all of it. All of it. Now, Psalm 23, 5 makes a declaration that God has set that table right here, right now, on this planet, before our enemies. And God has anointed our head with oil. And it ought to run over, brother. It, it ought to be spilling out of us at all times. I've read some of these accounts of Benny Hinn just in a public setting. He's not there in his nice white suit and everything. He's not preaching the word. He's in a restaurant for dinner and ends up holding a church service in the lounge with a group of drug addicts and gets them born again. Smith Wigglesworth got a whole restaurant. I mean, there was a church service going on in that restaurant that day when he walked in. Amen. Think about what would happen if the body of Christ gets a hold of that kind of anointing and the next time you walk into a restaurant or a grocery store, you have to have a church service in the middle of that and people start getting healed and born again, tell me that wouldn't spread. Tell me the world wouldn't have its attention and its eyes. The news media wouldn't be able to ignore it any longer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And quite frankly, neither will the politician. Folks, we got Jesus on our side. We're an army. An army that cannot be stopped. Amen? Mm -hmm. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Why? Because I've eaten from the table that God has set. Go to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 27. And it came to pass. Oh, let me read that again. And it shall come to pass. No. Right? No, Kevin. In that day that the devil's burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and the devil's yoke from off your neck and the yoke that the devil put there shall be destroyed. Why? Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Now, go to Luke chapter 4. Jesus talking here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and to and recovering of the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the anointing and the preaching should be doing for us. Right here. We've got to get a hold of this. And we've got to allow God to do it. And the acceptable year of the Lord is the Jubilee principle, which says this. There was a time period when they would set that Jubilee. No one had any more debts. Amen. None. Lynn and I, a few years ago, we made a, a stand to get out of debt. That's a good place to be. Amen. Amen. No debts. Don't owe anybody. 
and help. We can live free from having emotional upheavals. Why? Because when we eat from that table, the joy of the Lord is full. Go to Acts chapter 10. Start here in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now, he's not a respecter of persons, but what does God respect? A person's faith. And where does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more we eat from that table, the more we're going to stand in the respect of God. The more we respect what's on that table, the more we respect and honor to eat what's on that table, we gain God's respect. How about that? But in every nation, he that fears God, he that respects and honors God, and works righteousness. And works righteousness is accepted with God. How many of you want to be accepted with God? Amen. Amen. Right here. Respect and honor. God and God's word and work righteousness. How do we work righteousness? By the profession of God's word. The more we profess that, the more we're walking in righteousness. See, we have a right. We've got a right to step up to that table and eat what God has put on it. Yeah. Amen. It's ours. And then we have an obligation to act upon that word that God put on that table. The word which God said unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say no, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after, bat after the baptism which John preached. And here it is. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? God was with him. Well, I can't lay hands on anybody and see them healed. Why not? Is God with you? Hello. Is God with you? Then the anointing's with you because the Holy Spirit's with you. And yes, we can. We've done it with our, done it with our children. Around our house, you say you're sick, you better get ready. You about to be slapped with hands. <coughs> Am I right, Rose? Larry brought up. Help me ask Charles Caps. How, how, how was that, Larry? Uh, you practice what you preach. Right, okay. Yeah. Do you practice what you preach? Charles said, no, I preach what I practice. I preach what I practice. We need to be a living witness for Jesus Christ to this world. Amen. Yes, sir.
Lord, we can blame you on. How many of you know Jesus performed miracles? Amen. Well, the miracles that were performed through him were performed by the Holy Spirit. The anointing. It was the anointing. How God anointed him. See, we've got to get to the point where we've got our mindset on the fact that just as God anointed Jesus, he can anoint me. John 17, 18. We're, we're seeing it. A few years ago, Creflo Dollar, in his church, there were so many, in one month, there were so many wheelchairs that people got up out of, they had to have a semi-truck come to load it up to take it to the Goodwill and the hospitals in order to give those chairs away to people. One wheelchair. I want to see that semi packed up to these doors. Glory. Amen. 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 Why? Verses 1 and 2, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also, by our Lord Jesus Christ, we have access by faith into this grace. We have access to grace. It's there, but we access it. Through Jesus Christ by faith. Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God. Now, go over to chapter 3. Uh, let me start here. You ought to read this whole chapter. But let me start in verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you read this chapter, you find out we all did before we got to this position. Being justified freely by God's grace. Yes. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We are justified by the grace of God. We just access it. You may not realize it, but you access the grace of God. 
God, the day you got born again. That is true. Now, back over to chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which do what? Receive. They that would receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Right. And the Amplified Version, I believe, says reign as a king in this life. Yeah. Through what? Through accessing the grace, through receiving that grace and walking in the righteousness. Yeah. So by giving honor, that's attending to God's word, giving honor and respect to God's word and working the righteousness of those words. I'm going to go one more place, Nelson. Hebrews. Back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Well, let me start there when we talk about verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the highest by the blood of Jesus, by a living way which Jesus has consecrated for us through the veil that is to save Jesus' flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance. How do we get that true heart? How do we get that full assurance? Through attending to God's word. Through preaching, study, and meditation. Amen. Notice the process here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We hear it in preaching, we study it, and then we meditate on it. Hearing and hearing and even hearing. And now, what we see, the anointing is growing. Well, I thought the anointing was just for ministers. Well, we're all ministers of God, folks. Yeah. Let us, by having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hold fast to your profession. What do you profess that the Word is doing for you? What is you professing, what are you professing that the Word is in you? In other words, there's healing Word. Therefore what? The Word is healing. It's healing me. There's financial work. So I profess God's financial plan in my life. And I'm respecting and honoring that through my tithes and offerings. And God said, if I'm a giver, it'll be given back unto me. To the point where it's got to be running over. So we have to press it down to make room for more. And then running over even more. Right. Men shall give into our bosom. Hallelujah. Well, that's what happened to Paul Roberts years ago when he was building the city of faith. The fellow that ran a great on racetrack. A man who didn't believe in God. More atheistic than anything else. Heard about it. Called Lord Roberts. Said, I'm going to give you money here, and I don't even know why. Or was laughed, he knew why. That man said, Lord Roberts, two and a half million dollars. Wealth to the center. which is still operating today. And there's a whole lot of physical healing power that goes out of that place around the world. They 
They send medical supplies to places that don't have them. They send doctors all over the world who are faith-filled doctors. Yeah. Men given into our women. Well, I don't know how that could happen to me, and that's where our problem is. We have to believe. We have to have faith in it. And when you do, let me give you one little bit of advice. Don't go and pick somebody out that's going to be the person that gives to you. Let God do it. Yes. That's what the standard Otherwise, we start to force things that shouldn't be, and that's not an act of righteousness. Do you get anything out of this this morning? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you for joining us. We love you. God bless.